Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I made a video. I've been working on my project up in Hamburg for the last, well, intensively for the last few months really, which hasn't allowed me to have, have any time in the, in the garage at all. The last work I did up here <clears throat> was before our holiday in the summer on the X5, uh, but since then I've been doing nothing. I've got the Porsche up here, as you know, uh, for the winter now. I've got quite a lot of work planned for that. Um, but with regards to the Land Rover, I am hoping to get it finished. Now, and I've said that a few times in the past. I think two years ago was the first time I mentioned that up here. But um, there, there are reasons why I haven't got it done, time being one of them. <clears throat> but the other reason is, of course, necessity. I don't really need this on the road. And as, as long as it's on the road, it's costing me money. So I've done certain projects on the car, which you could say, well, you could have got it on the road and done those works afterwards, like the hard top, for example, and a lot of the smaller jobs. But with the German TÜV over here, what I want to do is I want to get the car to uh, a level whereby I'm happy with it and where it can, it can stay like this for a while, because any changes that you do to the car later, you know, like a different hard top or different wheels, you have to take it back to the MOT station to get them put into the papers of the car. So any modifications that you do to a car, let it be wheel spaces or tire size or an exhaust, you have to take it back to the, um, the TÜV, you know, the, uh, the MOT station, and have it registered, checked and registered. And then what you do, you have the papers for the car, and then you'll see in those papers all of the additions that you've done uh, over the standard uh, model and that's what makes it legal so it's quite uh, uh, it's quite involving and that's why I want to get everything done on it so, uh, uh, now so that when I have it registered all of those things will be um, in on the papers so we're pretty close I must admit I know you know from all the videos up to date uh, that we're pretty close in terms of getting it done there are a few internal stuff like uh, things like getting the internal light finished uh, and mounted this that's small jobs really uh, the d-rings to the front i want to do but all of those are really cosmetic stuff uh, the biggest thing at the moment really is the timing and the rich running of the engine the strange thing with with that is um it starts really well so i'm thinking the timing is on point because when it starts it just goes with the first with the first turn more or less it's got a bit of a flat battery from sitting around up here for, for so long in the cold, uh, but I've got a trickle charger on there now. But what I'll do in a bit is I'll show you how it starts, um, and, uh, and then you can see for yourself. But I don't know if the issue lies with the Weber carb. Some of you have said they're, they're a bit tricky, they're underpowered for the vehicle. And when I first bought the car and when I drove it, uh, it had a Zenith carb on it, and that was fine. It had an issue where it used to run on when it was hot, so you'd turn it off and it would just chitter the da 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 and, and sometimes, more often than not, because I found it quite embarrassing if you pull up to a party and you turn your car off and it's still running. So I'd used to stall it sometimes just to stop it from doing that. Um, and I'm sure there was a simple fix. One of you might know uh, the fix for that. And I could have got it sorted in five minutes, but back then I didn't know. So that was an issue with the Zenith carb. But with the Weber carb, I haven't really had much experience. I rebuilt it as part of this restoration project with new diaphragms and new seals and so on and, and gave it a good clean out. But there might be some, uh, uh, something in there uh, blocking it up because I can see on the, on the petrol catcher bowl, you know, which is part of the car, um, just to the, to the driver's side of the, of the engine on the right hand side, uh, it's full of metal shavings. So that's obviously come from the petrol tank when I, when I restored that. So quite easily, some of those shavings might have got caught in the carburetor. Um, so I'm sort of juggling uh, between whether I take the carburetor apart again um, or whether I look for leaks still, because I still have that leak on the downpipe. That's another job I've got to do, which I mentioned in a couple of videos ago. But it's just really getting, getting to the bottom of it, whether the timing does need doing. What I haven't done uh, to, the, to date is with the strobe light. So I haven't done, used the timing tool, I haven't got one, but a colleague of mine has, so I'll ask him to bring that. And I'll make sure the timing is perfect, and then I'll start looking at, uh, looking at other problems. But yeah, yesterday I, I came up here and I wanted to, it's the first day of my holidays, basically because of my, my project uh, and how busy it's been. 
Uh, I, I've saved up all of my holidays. So I've got 26 holidays uh, to take by the end of the year, which coincidentally means I'm, I'm off work until January the 4th uh, next year <laughs> when we go back to work. So I've got a really nice block of time to do some projects at home and, and do some work on the cars. Um, so yeah, quite, quite an exciting time really. So hopefully the, the videos will be a bit more regular and, and the goal is, as I say, to get this through the TIFF and on the road. But yeah, yesterday, as I say, I, I came up here to do work on the Land Rover, but then started looking at the Porsche and then got sidetracked and ended up doing a bunch of work on there. So um, I'll, I'll cover those in a different video for those of you who, who are only interested in the Land Rover, but I know a large portion of my subscribers are also uh, interested in the Porsche, so I'll, I'll also be, um, update, uh, update you on, on that project as well. So yeah, let's get to it. I'm gonna show you how the car starts. Uh, I've had it on a trickle charger, as I say, overnight, and I'll video from inside the engine bay, which may or may not show us anything, but also from the outside as well, so you can see and hear how it starts. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by uh, disconnecting this trickle charger. It's charged overnight, which is good. See if I can get my gloves on first. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure whether the uh, alternator is working well enough. Maybe it's a dodgy ground or something along those lines because, okay, I don't drive the car much, but there's a lot to do with it and it's also sitting up here um, a lot of the time. So, but I often find that the battery is, is, is very weak. So I don't know if the alternator is, is working to its full potential and I'll have to at some point go around and check all of the, all of the grounds. Um, because it was a new battery, I mean at some point every battery is new, uh, it's not brand new anymore, but I think I bought that in 2018 when I was uh, first, first start, starting the car for the first time, so it should be okay. But anyway, let's disconnect. Move that over there. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just going to push it outside first because uh, it will stink this whole place out if I start it in here. So. Yeah, it's best to do it all outside. Good exercise for the morning, this thing is bloody heavy. Oh. But maybe just a, a quick update, maybe, you know, just have a look around. You haven't seen the car for a while. So it's looking pretty dusty at the moment, actually. I didn't have a cover on all of it, but it's looking, oh, it's looking cool as ever. You know, I mean, I did all of this work uh, at the beginning of this year. Oh, you can't see. Up under here with this last, these last panel repairs in here. And this I really enjoyed doing, making my own bracketry to, to make these panels nice and solid. They are absolutely solid now, just totally solid on this side. I've got some tidying up to do here. I was just filling some of the gaps there. I might just sort of dob some paint on there. But as I, I think you remember, um, I'm trying to keep all of the, the panels original as possible because those are all dents and scrapes I put in the car myself or my dad. Um, but it's all looking pretty clean. The last thing I did in here was this battery holder, which as you'll probably notice is too big for this car. It's actually for a, well, not, not too big for this car, but it's not meant for a petrol car. This is meant for a diesel engine uh, because you have bigger batteries in the diesel car and therefore this battery holder is bigger. But when I bought it from eBay, 
I think the seller didn't realize that, but it works fine. And I'm really happy that I've, I've got it now. That was one of the, the one things that I never had on this car. But there is the item in question here, this Weber carburetor, which needs looking at again. And this is my secondary fuel filter that I've had in there. You can see, oh, I don't know if you can see much dirt in there, but that probably could do with a change. Um, and obviously the distributor down here, which, which I'll have to look at, at to get the timing right. Um, but otherwise it's all looking fine. I've got this mouse hole here, which was actually remnants from the storage when it was in the woods all those years. And I still haven't managed to mend that. That's a small thing that I'll do. Um, but yeah, I mean, the big thing was this year was doing that hard top, which looks still really cool. Some of you mentioned that I should put a clear coat on top of it and you're absolutely right. I must do that because it will just fade. Um, but otherwise on this side, as you might remember, I've got like a provisional bracket here holding this on, but I do have an original inside, which goes into that hole there. I just need to make up a little bit of strengthening on this uh, on this panel like I did with the last one just so I can get that done and also on this side I need to make that bracket like I did on the other side um, and also clean this I've done that part of the uh, the foot well, uh, wheel well because that's when I did that um, those panel repairs there but here I have to clean up and paint so that's a small job to be done but otherwise on the inside it's all looking as it did. You remember me putting these handles on, which is pretty cool. Something I wanted since since owning the car, but never got around to, to actually buying. Originals cost a huge, well, quite, you know, considerably, uh, uh, quite a lot of money. Um, so I got these from Paddock Spares, which in, in themselves weren't, weren't particularly cheap, but they are a worthwhile investment. It's amazing how how much better you can close the doors. I know that's that's quite an obvious statement, but most people just do that or that, but you can get much more purchase on this handle and you can get a better swing and it closes the door much more solidly. But anyway, that is what the interior is looking like after a year of not doing pretty much anything. Um, not much to report in here. Obviously the last thing I did was to put the the indic hazard lights on for the uh, German TIFF, but otherwise it is all looking pretty, pretty original. Um, and I haven't done much to it at all in the past. So up here, this is where I'm going to fit the interior light. And I'm looking at some cunning way of running a cable down through here somewhere so it's hidden. So if any of you have got a good idea of how to fit or run the cable, so you can't see it all over the place. That would be much appreciated if you can let me know in the comments. Or of course, use the channel's email address, uh, whichever way you want to contact me. Because uh, I would still like to be able to take this roof off in the summer. Um, what else in here? Nothing else really, not that I can think of. Um, that seems to... Hey. I was arming and ironing whether I take this dent out. It's not really bothering anybody but I could just heat that up and bang that out a little bit but uh, yeah and no electrics on on the back yet I haven't I haven't put any electrics on for the tow hook so that might be something I should do before I put it through the TIFF or the MOT because I want to have it registered with a working tow hitch um, anything else anything else oh, I was thinking about this last night um, this uh, this sealant, because is, is, it's all original, has, has cracked. So what I'll do is I'll clean that up. And I found when I was, I was messing about within the gutter on the roof, you can actually heat this up with a, with a, with a, you know, like a, I, I can't remember what you call them, but you know, the hot air uh, blowers like you use to, to remove wallpaper. And it basically makes this malleable again and you can smooth it down. So I'm gonna try that. It's worth trying rather than like replacing it. But at some point I will have to do this door because there are, there's quite a bit of surface rust in there. The lock no longer works. Uh, so I need to get a new lock on there, but you can see in here, it really could do with doing, or, or, or me doing it, because there's a lot of surface rust. And maybe at that point, I'll remove the rear window and do that seal properly. Um, but it's, it's not too bad, you know? I mean, overall, this car has lasted pretty well. 
out out in the elements before it went into the barn or I should say in that Nissan hut in the woods it was uh, it was outside for a couple of years so it's, it's not done too badly but yeah okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get it started and I will show you what I mean with regards to starting you can see quite a lot of soot on the inside of that exhaust pipe there uh, but yeah I'd like your opinions Okay, so this is with a bit of choke, about halfway. Okay, so this is with a bit of choke, about halfway. Whoa. Okay, so you heard that really started badly. That's a fully charged battery and it virtually didn't turn the engine. So I don't know if there's an issue there with the starter motor, but here you can really Try the, the choke a little bit better now. Oh, oh. And if you can see it still, it's still chugging of, and it stinks like hell. And that's the choke right in now. I probably had too much choke there. But there's not, not too much more I can show you here. It sounds like it's not getting enough fuel for a start, so maybe there's a blockage in there. But I found when I use the the adjustment screws here, it really doesn't have much much effect on the way the carburetor works. Um, other than the fact that if you pull it, if you turn it right out, it cuts out altogether. But let me know what you think with regards to the tick over. Whether you think that's too high. Don't forget we've got a, a huge gap here, or a relatively big gap on the downpipe, between the downpipe and the manifold, which I need to sort out. It's evening out a little bit now as it warms up, but it still, still stinks. So this is driving around for about five minutes, and it still splutters a little bit. And I can't say I remember ever doing that when I was younger, but who knows. My friend's 2A, which has exactly the same setup as mine, two and a quarter petrol with a Weber carb, does this quite regularly. Backfires when you're going down a hill as well. 
Um, I can't say mine does that, but I haven't really taken it out for a long drive. But still quite smelly. But I don't know how much more smelly that is than it should be. Maybe that's just how it is. Let me get this up. Have a quick look under here. I mean, the response is pretty good. Um, I don't, maybe I'm just expecting too much from it. It hesitates a little bit there. It sort of splutters when you put full, full throttle. This sounds pretty good. I don't know if you can see in here, but these are the adjustments that I've got on the weather. So let's go for a quick drive. Whoops, bonnet. It's going to be a bit difficult driving with one hand, but we'll see how we get on. Go straight and oh no, maybe not. Okay. Got a terrible vibration under there, and I don't know what that is yet. So if anybody knows, please let me know. Big bump coming up. Oh. go around in third for a little bit. Look under the bonnet, listen to it. I smelt the exhaust there, which obviously isn't too healthy, but it doesn't smell too bad. It smells quite petrolly still, so maybe it is running rich. Maybe the tick over is a little bit high. But the thing is, when I set the carburetor to, to reduce the tick over, so reduce the fuel on tick over, it then doesn't run correctly when it's cold uh, and, and smokes even more. So I don't know whether that's just a characteristic of the Weber carb or whether there is something wrong. But anyway, your opinions on this video, uh, much appreciated. And just to show you how it starts, uh, when it's been running for a while, it literally starts right away. So, hang on a sec. Hmm. If I can get the key in the right way. So it starts. Okay, so I've just taken that bowl off, which is designed to catch all of the crap that comes out of the petrol tank. I don't know if you can see, but obviously, well, you can quite clearly. They're all metal shavings, 
presumably from when I cleaned out the inside of the petrol tank. So maybe some of those got through into the carburetor. Maybe not, I don't know, but it's probably worth, or is it, is it worth taking apart the carburetor again to see what's what, or should I just use some carb cleaner? But that's what that looks like in there and is in need of a good clean. So just to show you from underneath the car, what I was doing there, it's well worth wearing some rubber gloves when you do this because I got it on my gloves a little bit. But that there is obviously the where the bowl goes and you unscrew that little uh, hand nut there. Uh, but I'm going to put that back in now. Okay, so that's back in. I actually used just a little bit of engine oil, clean engine oil, um, on that gasket. But now what you can do, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that down there, but there's obviously the hand pump in there, which I can't actually reach. But there's a hand pump for the fuel system just down there. You can see it with that small hole in the end and you pump that and you can fill up that bowl again of that reservoir. Um, but the same will happen mechanically once you once you crank the engine. But uh, that's that for now. Um, now I guess to have a look at this, maybe I'll pour some, or pour, uh, squirt some <clears throat> carb cleaner in there just to see if I can, uh, that might help a little bit. seems more responsive now before I did beforehand when I put my put the throttle full open it hesitated but now it's not hesitating seems to be that seems to have helped a little bit vibration on here. I don't know how much vibration is actually normal. That's still spluttering a little bit. But yeah, let me know what you think. Um, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on, on whether that's a a healthy <coughs> uh, running Land Rover or you know whether it sounds like yours at home or whether you think that there are running issues obviously the black smoke when it starts I'm not happy about um, but when it's running it seems to be running fine so I don't know maybe I'm worrying about nothing maybe I just need to heat it up a little bit before I take it to the tiff who knows um, but I can still smell petrol in the air so I just think it's still running a bit rich 
but let me know your thoughts. Okay, so just working on a, another job at the moment, and you may remember that some of my brake lines are held on by zip ties. So they've been on there for a couple of years actually. Um, and I ran out of the original clips, uh, which, which are standard to the, to the car. So what I've done is I've made up my own, very simple, just sort of heated up and shaped over a, yeah, a small, uh, I used a drill bit to shape it over a drill bit, which is similar, similar diameter to this. So what I'm gonna do is basically where I've got those um, clips or, or, or pull ties, I'm going to put them on like that. It does mean drilling into the chassis, which I really don't like doing, but you know, life's too short to worry about a, a couple of small holes in this uh, cross member here. And obviously I'll need them for the MOT, so I'm going to do one over here and one over there. And I've got them already made up, and I'm actually using the original screws from the car. Okay, so I've got the first clip in there, and I put quite a bit of grease on there. Um, so I'm just gonna cut the first cable tie. And that is, that is far more solid than, than the cable tie, obviously. So that's obviously why, why you do that. I've also got some rubber bungs, which I'm gonna put in those holes there. Uh, but I'm just gonna do the other one. And that will be another small job done. Okay, so let's try and get some light under here. Um, that is that done. So I measured them four centimeters off the bottom, just basically underneath that that hole there on both sides. They're nice and tight, actually. As I said before, they're far tighter than than um, than the zip ties were. There's absolutely no movement in that now, which will also help on vibration. You can see from the zip ties where I've driven around that brake pipe has, has vibrated on this uh, cross member and has started to go through the paint. So obviously over time that would wear out the copper brake pipe, which is why you don't zip tie brake, brake pipes to um, the chassis. But anyway, I've got those two bungs in there now, put some grease in there and that's just locked those two holes up. There are quite a few holes actually in this cross member. Uh, where did I see some more? There's another two, there's another one there one in the middle for any kind of drainage, and there's another one over there, and of course, th these two are mirrored on the other side, so, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll cover them up eventually all on the other side, but that's these two done now, and ready for the MOT.